Welcome to module 9 lecture 6, the last lecture of this module and also the last lecture of the series, concrete technology series and uh, we shall be discussing about some more special concretes in this lecture and also talk about sustainability. Polymer concrete composite is the first one that we will look into, then we will look into high volume fly ash concrete geopolymer concrete, heavy and lightweight concrete and other concretes sustainability that is what we will look into. So, this is a sequence of things that we are going to look at. So, you see in 1960s when uh, you know the 50s, 60s polymer development in polymer science and technology took place and in the meantime. Uh, concrete science and technologies who are trying to enhance the strength of concrete. Now, the strength of concrete is restricted by the cap, you know it is finally, the water cement ratio that we have understood that it is the water cement ratio which governs the strength and therefore, there is a inherent porosity capillary porosity in the uh, concrete system and therefore, its strength could not have gone beyond 40 those days. So, the other alternative, or alternative was remove the hydraulic cement altogether. Polymer science and technology had, had developed by that time. Therefore, why not you know remove the cement hydraulic cement binder altogether. This gives rise to polymer cement concrete composites actually polymer concrete composites. Out of this there are three of them one we call as polymer cement concrete polymer cement concrete polymer cement concrete. Then there is another one we call it uh, polymer concrete, a third is a polymer impregnated concrete. So, this is polymer cement concrete, cement concrete, polymer concrete and polymer impregnated concrete. impregnated concrete, polymer impregnated concrete. Now, is it in this one polymer cement concrete means you are the attempt is to remove the hydraulic binder. So, here this is actually we do not remove the full, full thing. In fact, we add, add some component as an admixture almost 5 percent, 6 percent and then use together with the so, part of the cement system in the part of the cement system we use a polymeric material and PC is one where actually hydraulic binder is completely removed and polymer impregnated concrete is already an existing concrete where we impregnate with polymer. So, this is what it is polymer concrete composite. First one is the polymer cement concrete. We just had about 5, 6 percent. Hydraulic cement binder with water can be replaced partly by polymers to form polymer modified concrete, mortar concrete for repair purpose, latex modified concrete. Rubber latexes are water used here mostly and this rubber latexes they are actually elastomers. Now, I am sure uh, most of uh, you are familiar with uh, what is a polymer. A polymer is a material which is actually produced from monomers, repetition of the monomers. So, there are varieties of polymers like thermoplastics, thermosets, elastomers, right, the classes of materials. So, thermoplastics are the one which can be remolded after heating, thermosets are one which cannot be remolded, they are usually cross linked polymer system. I do not have time to go into the details of this ones that could be form of some other course, materials course that you might have done. Now, the elastomers is another class of material uh, which uh, is uh, you know like which, uh, which uh, 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 can be there can be thermoplastic elastomers, but uh, these materials are another kind of polymers which are rubble like as we understand they have elastic recovery under low strain. So, elastomers are polymers which are elastic exhibits recovery under low strains. So, latexes are actually elastomers. 
this ultra fine emulsions after coagulation and the material behaves like rubber. So, these are small particles 1 to 5 micron I suppose these are the kind of sizes very small size rubber latex spherical particle spherical spher spherical particle actually this is added to the cement concrete system and uh, they behave like rubber and they get polymerized solidified polymerized. So, when polymerization occurs the mass increases uh, molecular mass increases and therefore, it solidifies and when it solidifies within the concrete system cement based cement system 1 to 5 micron means they will go in the interstices of the cement themselves and thereby they actually increase the strength of the. So, they act as filler then solidify reduce down porosity somewhat and therefore, they increase the strength. So, strength, strength enhancement could be 1.5 times strength enhancement ratio as it is called the strength of same water cement ratio concrete. So, strength of the polymer modified concrete divided by strength of the same water cement ratio ordinary concrete non modified could be about 1.5 1.6 times. So, good concrete can be prepared with this, but this is costly. So, therefore, remain as a repair material one can make them into flowable micro concrete been used extensively for repair work. Processing similar to ordinary concrete only one point because if you are trying to you see they come as pre packed materials they usually come as pre packed system manufacturer supply them as pre packed pre packed system. So, they give you pre packed more you know kind of mortar for example. So, everything is mixed you mix water and the material is made the all the construction chemical companies who supply them they give you pre packed, but if you are making yourself then when you are doing this processing almost similar you must have some kind of anti foaming agent anti foaming agent anti foaming because this fine particles very fine spherical particles they tend to generate a lot of foams. So, you must have anti foaming agent some plasticizers and other admixtures could be there, but anti foaming agent is very much required. So, one can actually use this rubber latex as prepare their own concrete also, but then commercially pre packed materials are available and very useful in repair works because they can be free flowing, they can be flowable. So, before self compacting concrete came this was very much flowable material and even after self compacting concrete has come this is used as an extensively as a repair material. Something like this, so this is your material you can see the cement and the latex. So, they go inside the system and actually polymerizes. So, once they polymerize they will actually get inside and the cement hydrates cement will also hydration of cement. So, cement hydrates will be there this will also polymerize solidify and therefore, the bond they make it a better concrete as such. So, this is your polymer cement concrete this polymer cement concrete you have all kind of latexes such as you know uh, basically uh, SBR styrene styrene butadiene rubber SBR styrene butadiene rubber you know it is not easy for concrete technologist and cement uh, I mean civil engineers to remember this polymeric name. So, but styrene butadiene rubber is SBR system is very popular SBR is very popular you can have epoxy latexes epoxy latexes polyvinyl acetate PVA latexes you can have acrylic latexes, acrylic latexes etcetera etcetera there are various kind of system, but this is very very popular butadiene is a rubber styrene butadiene rubber system. So, this is basically in a kind of latexes which are used and they make the polymer concrete. So, this is one type the next type is polymer concrete polymer impregnated concrete. So, polymers impregnated concrete you have got hydraulic cement binder and this is impregnated with low viscosity monomer that is polymerized to form polymer impregnated concrete. Let me see if I have a diagram I will come back to this later on you know I will come back to this later on just let us look at this. So, this is your ordinary concrete this is your existing concrete and your pores these are the pores as I have shown the blank white spaces these are the pores. So, these are your pores originally they are the pores actually they are the pores they are the pores actually pores are available. So, what you do you actually impregnation means put the material your monomer with accelerator etcetera etcetera because polymerization would be through an accelerator or by radiation technique 
or by thermal technique. So what you do, you actually put some heating system. So you just impregnation, injection is under pressure. Impregnation is just putting it on top, flooding it and then the impregnation will occur, the polymer will get inside, you know polymer will simply get inside and block the pores at the top and this is polymer impregnation concrete. So polymer impregnation can be done from the top on a flat surface and obviously the bottom pores are still remaining but the top pores are there. So this is the process of polymer impregnation. So you know originally you must have a good concrete. Low viscosity monomer that is actually pre impregnated into the concrete and then polymerize to form polymer impregnated concrete. Now this polymerization can occur because of the radiation but that is a health hazard. By thermal techniques, thermal polymerization, radiation polymerization or by using chemical polymerization with kind of a hardener system you know like if you are familiar with possibly araldite you know which is of course an epoxy. There are various kind of glues, two component glues or epoxy uh, is a one material which is very popular. Uh, now you have two component or three component. So there is a there is a resin, there is a uh, hardener and maybe an accelerator. So one of them would be a catalyst or another material which will finally make it to polymerize right and there is acceleration accelerate this process. So you can have monomer mixed up with those materials all together which will polymerize it and they get inside and then polymerizes it. So successfully used in bridge deck actually. The concrete surface becomes impervious, stronger, durable and high abrasion resistant. You know the durability is very good, strength improvement ratio can be as good as 2 in this kind of material when tested in laboratory cylinders right. And successfully used in bridge deck wearing coat because wearing coat what happens is they actually tend to you know uh, get, uh, get actually uh, damaged and distressed uh, during because of abrasion of the wheels and so on. So what you got to do after some years you have to put another wearing coat. Now if you go on putting in that manner the thickness would go on increasing and dead load will increase. Also the people what they thought they initially thought that they will replace the wearing coat for a given after a given number of years not replace put another layer over a number of years replacing is very difficult. But so hap it so happened the traffic increased significantly the automobile technology improved more automobile cheaper automobile automobile you know market actually increased and therefore traffic increased in the system and when the traffic increased the wearing coat actually gave off much earlier. Therefore you have to put in another wearing coat the repetition the frequency of putting in wearing coat increased. So what do you do you cannot put on go on putting weights after weights on top of it. Polymer impregnation actually did a very good job there because once you put that your wearing coat lasts much longer its absorption resistance increase durability increase and therefore it will also protect the inside structural element longer. So this was polymer impregnated concrete, methyl methacrylate, epoxy, many of those polymers they have been used for this purpose. So that is what we so showed earlier. Well polymer concrete is polymer concrete is simply polymer concrete is simply the polymer concrete is simply you replace hydraulic binder completely with polymeric material. So epoxy concrete also used for repair material, epoxy concrete used for repair material, epoxy concrete used for repair material you know. So you have a glue like for epoxy concrete for example GY 250 or 230 these are the brands earlier available, hardener glue and hardener HY 830, 850 etcetera etcetera series and there is a third component another. So you will have this one you mix the monomer or resin with the hardener system and put sand into it. Now just simple example you can take example of heraldite, 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 heraldite. You take example of heraldite, it has got a glue and a hardener. Now you put some sand together in this heraldite it makes you an epoxy mortar. But only thing is the difficulty is that the mixing process the viscosity of the system stickiness of the system has to is such that it is not easy to make them. So you have to have you know special kind of ones at the same time you may have to have a spray 
for example, might have a silicon spray as a demolding agent. So, normally not one would not be using them for regular concrete because it is so costly. It is you know you can understand a small eraldite tube costs you how much. Even today in Indian scenario even if the cement price is high 50 kilo would cost let us say 50 kilo cost even 500 rupees it is only 10 but today it is not 500 as yet it is 10 rupees a kilo but epoxy will cost you eraldite small tube cost you few grams cost you 110 rupees or 20 rupees, 25 rupees, 10 grams, you know, the cost is astronomical compared to concrete. So, this kind of concrete cannot replace our conventional concrete, but can actually do very well as far as repair is concerned. So, quick repair, quick repair, quick repair, it will set within 24 hours. So, if you have a pre uh, you know, uh, let us say a pre anchor has just gave in and your system is system is all locked up unless you do the pre stressing in bridge it can happen or similar kind of elements it can happen that if you do not do the pre stressing you cannot remove the support system. So, everything gets locked up and in such situation you want to quickly get the concrete repaired epoxy can be a solution there because it will develop the strength within 24 hours you know curing time is relatively less but extremely costly. Of course, you have jet cement today jet cement I mentioned earlier. Uh, they can do the you know they can quickly set and all that. So, airport runway repairs particularly the, the uh, during the war time uh, could be such jet cement epoxy is costly so, so it is not used, but epoxy have similar kind of properties quickly epoxy concrete. You can have polyester concrete PMMA polymethyl methacrylate concrete all these concretes have been used the strengths are much higher because the capillary inherent capillary porosity business is not there. But cost being higher not used for conventional structural element only used for repair work only used for repair work only used for repair work. So, these are your polymer cement concrete these are our polymer cement concrete system. Let us look at a new concrete called heavy concrete used for radiation shield. The major problem in a nuclear reactor is to attenuate the gamma rays and neutrons emerging from the core by means of biological shield you know this should provide a kind of shield for biological shield. So, you do not want gamma rays and neutrons must be going out. This is overcome you have the cheapest way and most convenient material chosen is a heavy concrete. And what do you do in this one? You have heavy aggregate, hematite aggregate, barite aggregate the aggregates which are very strong. So, this is called heavy concrete quick introduction to this material essentially you have x-ray photons photon energy etcetera etcetera the after attenuation you know the this is your thickness you know basically basically this should be your concrete. So, it when it passes through the material some object it has which has got a thickness a density and this atomic number the actually it will attenuate and if this radiation is allowable this is fine. So, heavy concrete is based on this principle I the radiation that you get is I 0 that is incident radiation okay, and e, e to the power minus mu x. So, this mu depends upon density thickness etcetera etcetera x is the x is the thickness mu depends upon amongst other things it depends upon density there are a few other factors. So, therefore, heavy aggregate we use barite or hematite and their specific gravity says 4 to 5. So, this is the this is the concrete obviously, here the mixed proportioning is not quite different from the conventional concrete. Finally, it will be the water cement ratio and all other properties of the aggregate whichever governs the strength of concrete it will be the same. So, heavy concretes are used for radiation shield. Lightweight concrete on the other hand we use for uh, insulation purpose. Now, you remember thermal conductivity, thermal conductivity mainly depends on aggregate type and of course, the porosity of the aggregate and nature of pores and obviously, moisture content moisture content affected right. Now, this means that the density it will depend upon density. So, thermal conductivity has become more important than ever before because of what you call energy efficient building design and so on and so forth operational energy consumption in conditioned building. 
So thermal conductivity is very important. Insulation, thermal insulation is very important from that point of view. And the concrete, thermal con you know, concrete that can provide these are actually lightweight concrete. So lightweight concrete, lightweight concrete. How lightweight? Well, essentially because low porosity, high porosity means light, uh, lightweight. So thermal conductivity depends on aggregate type of course and the porosity. Aggregate is the one which conducts, which, which has got uh, the conductivity of its own. But the porosity is one which governs it. And obviously nature of the pores also governs somewhat, but I think I am not interested in telling you about what is the kind of nature of the pores and so on and so forth. So it's a, it depends upon conductivity of the solid and pores. And the solid conductivity will depend upon mineralogical composition of the aggregate. For example, quartz or quartzite has got very high thermal conductivity compared to other type of aggregate, compared to other type of aggregate. So lightweight concrete will depend upon is, is basically because of the porosity. Low porosity high means high density, high porosity means low density. Now lightweight aggregates were the other kind of aggregates which is generally not available much in India. You have something called cinder concrete, not a structural concrete, but cinder um, or overburned bricks, they will give you low density, uh, low density, lower density, good give you somewhat good thermal conductivity. But in India, it is aerated concrete, autoclaved aerated concrete or foam concrete, these are the ones which are used as lightweight concrete. So you have got aerated concrete, aerated concrete actually, you know, uh, autoclave 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 blocks foam concrete now this you know the foaming agent you have some sort of foaming agent aluminum powder or there is even organic foaming agents these days so you make foam and put it into the concrete or mortar that you make and you can make foam concrete there are some agents which you can add in the concrete right in the beginning they will go into the concrete system and generate a lot of foam or void system gases and this entrapped gases can give you aerated concrete. So now this curing of this ones you one can do autoclaved. So using fly ash, fly ash, sand, one can use even river sand on those ones, you know fly ash, sand and part cement one can actually then use autoclaving at high temperature blocks can be generated and that gives you you know fly ash or various kind of blocks and the concrete there. There are you know even in form work also you can produce actually with a foaming agent autoclaved I mean aerated concrete. So this is these are used for particularly used for thermal and acoustic insulation particularly for thermal insulation particularly for thermal insulation. Also, they serve as lightweight, so they can serve, of course, you know, you know by by the porosity at the front, they can reduce down the, uh, give, provide you some kind of sound insulation. Sound insulation actually is a function of the mass of the wall. Larger mass, more insulation. But absorption co property is the function of the surface. So, where if you have porous surface, that absorbs more. So, lightweight aggregate concrete. Also, if it is used as a core in a sandwich panel, a sandwich, you know, you have two this is one this is another panel and you have a third 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 sandwich material here so that's a sandwich one so this is this is the one this material this material will take the you know load load let us say and inside material can be lightweight material which will act as thermal insulation whole system can give you good acoustic insulation also because layered system gives you good acoustic insulation as well so these materials are used for such functional purpose and lightweight aggregates are of course not much popular in India because they are not available. Natural lightweight aggregates are available elsewhere in the world. But you can have lightweight aggregate generated from fly ash by sintering process. So you can have synthetic lightweight aggregate coming from sintering process and aerated concrete I have already mentioned. A variety of another concrete is no fines concrete which is pervious concrete. But I will come to this just before let us see the thermal conductivity is a function of porosity in dry state and it is also a function of porosity in saturated. So saturated case this is saturated, this is dry, 
this is the thermal conductivity. So as the porosity increases, thermal conductivity reduces significantly. Porosity increases. Now here is your 888 concrete somewhere, very small, 0 0.02 watt meter degree centigrade. Even in saturated condition, they will be 0 0.4 or 0.5. While normal aggregates are here, this is for concrete actually. This is a normal aggregate would be somewhere there 2.5 and at saturated condition 4 etc with quartzite aggregate. Other aggregates might show you somewhere there. So you see you can generate actually lightweight concrete here but even normal concrete their thermal conductivities are of these varieties orders are known to us. Saturated condition with moisture they give you higher conductivities. The pervious concrete allows water to percolate through it no fines. Now you can actually have only the you have to also find out the strength is sufficient. So no fines there will be voids in the system and interconnected voids in the system. For water harvesting they could be a useful thing the pervious concrete could be useful for water, har water harvesting but they can serve also as good insulation. They can also serve as good insulation provided you are able to make them and put them in the right kind of place where you do not want moisture to percolate because if you put it in the rooftop the water percolates then is, is going to be no use but they can also you know depending upon the situation. So no fines concrete you, you, you leave voids basically you have system like this aggregate system and paste will go do not put in sufficient paste to fill in all of them or even if you put the you know the, it, it has to be controlled otherwise the cost would be high. So one has to see that. People are also trying with it kind of uh, um, polymeric balls or polymeric hollow uh, aggregate system plastic aggregates and so on. There are several other attempts are being made to get actually lightweight concrete and uh, uh, these are all at, the, at those stage. But A rated concretes are reality and lightweight aggregate concrete elsewhere in the world are also reality. Their strength actually reduces down you cannot get very high strength concrete with them because the aggregate becomes a weak point. So this is about lightweight concrete heavyweight concrete to lightweight concrete recycled aggregate concrete using waste in concrete of varieties kind. For example, people are trying all kinds of waste that is available for other industries to use because sand is a problem availability of the fine sand as sand as core fine aggregate is a problem. On the other hand you have got huge quantity of pond ash bottom ash as fine aggregate you know this you can use as fine aggregate there is a huge quantity of pond ash available bottom ash available as fine aggregate all right pond ash available bottom ash av available as and that you can use as fine aggregate. But one must design the mix, characterize this material and design this mix. One must characterize this material and design this mix. Some, uh, you know, it's one can use them successfully. There's no problem. Bottom has got uh, another advantage. If you are collecting directly from the uh, uh, thermal power plant, they uh, can actually give you good thermal insulation as well. However, this uh, materials are to be seen and designed because they are there are spheri component of spherical particle there and hollow face spherical particle and generally they have low de you know density is lower but strength can be higher. So therefore pond ash as bot pond ash bottom ash as fine aggregate this pond ash is nothing but the ash bottom ash and fly ash mixed together they are ponded for disposal purpose where variation they vary from point to point in the ash pond but they can still be the sizes are similar to fine sand and therefore one can use them. Recycled aggregate demolition waste constructed construction waste they have to be crushed and made make into a replicate. These are in research state still have to be used but these are possibilities. People are attempting them one problem associated with this one is whenever you take the aggregate recycle aggregate crush them you will have a original mortar layer adhering to it the interface original interface remains. So when you add now your mortar new mortar fresh mortar you know they would again form an interface interfacial transition zone. So original interface remains and people are trying to solve them. Now you have to increase the strength. So therefore there is a there one has to see limitation of the strength should be there good lot of research are going on to look into this material grade them first crush them get them graded get the packing density and obtain the system as it should be. So this is the recycled aggregate there are a lot of research being done on this right now. Another concrete is high volume fly ash concrete percentage of fly ash 
can be as high as 50 to 60 percent in this one of the cementitious material. So, you have 100 kg of cement or maybe you know you just have 100 kg of cement developed largely in North America, Canada and uh, uh, United States uh, 100 kg of cement maybe you will have 100 kg of flyers or maybe more 120 kg of flyers. So, this is the material you use now whole idea whole soul idea is to use you know whole soul idea where you do not want where you, where you do not want too much of uh, strength wanted is not very large where you do not want large strength, but uh, you want to use a lot of fly ash then this material is there. after all fly ash is a waste and you are saving onto the cement we will come to that in a in short while. And uh, in such situation uh, you know you can use this material very well, but how do you use this? to get structural grade of concrete 20, 30 MPa, 40 MPa concrete. Use super plasticizer to cut down onto your water, use super plasticizer to cut down onto your water and use low water cement ratio, low water to cementitious ratio, low water to cementitious ratio. So, therefore, initial strength will be given by the cement. So, 0 0.32 for 60 percent fly ash, 0 0.45 for 50 percent fly ash. So, use low water to cement ratio use a super plasticizer to get the workability. In fact, flyers can improve your uh, flyers actually because of its spherical shape as we have seen earlier it actually water acts like a somewhat like a water reducing agent. It cut down so to your water demand. So, therefore, both flyers and when these are used judiciously normally we use low water cement ratio for high strength in normal concrete, but here I am using low water cement ratio super plasticized, but using large quantity of flyers. So, my strength may not go high, but it will be normal strength concrete, but large quantity of fly ash I will be able to utilize. Low early strength because I am you know using fly ash low early strength and then good long term strength and durability I locked in. Well, the question of reinforcement if it is there then the issue of uh, carbonation these are to be looked into. So, high volume fly ash concrete has been a development largely it will give us uh, Mm, you know it, it, it can make it uh, to be a sustainable concrete because cement saving will be there. Then there is another concrete of the similar kind called geopolymer concrete. Now, this does not use cement at all that was high volume fly ash, but no cement high fly ash less cement, but now no cement fully fly ash. Basically it is you know carbon and silicon belong to the same group same group in periodic table. Therefore, this silicon also shows polymerization tendency it can form bond with silicon to silicon SiO SI SI bond possible four like four valences. So, this also can, you know it can, it can show that similar properties as carbon. So, it can be polymerized limited extent. So, this is reaction of aluminum silicon silicates with alkali polysilicates utilizes polycondensation of silica and alumina and high alkali content for strength. So, basically polycondensation condensation reaction is a polymerization reaction where all the product they actually react leaving no byproduct to make a polymerize polymer. So, polycondensation reaction is that. So, everything goes into it in high alkali and then this is because of polymer solidifies and therefore, it gives you strength. So, basically initially plastic then polymerizes become solid and it can give you the strength. One problem has been curing temperature is 60 degree centigrade or so, so far as understood and therefore, but remember it does not use any cement altogether. A typical mixture of this poly geopolymer concrete would look like this uh, 20 mm aggregate about 277 kg per meter cube of concrete, coarse aggregate 40 mm you know this is a second coarse aggregate 370 kg and uh, 7 mm 647 kg. So, you have actually 277 370 it will depend upon packing density 647 would make it uh, something like 1200 you know. So, 14 1294 kg of coarse aggregate 1294 kg of coarse aggregate fine aggregate is 554 it is a fine sand then use fly ash low calcium because this is the binder now. So, this is 480 kg 
408 kg per meter cube. This is the binder together with sodium silicate and sodium hydroxide. S you know, 103 kg, this is 41 kg. So, silicon to sodium oxide ratio should be equals to 2. Uh, actually, the concentration is pretty, pretty high, pretty high. You know, it is rich. For example, this is 8 m, this was 14 million, 14 molar concentration, this is the 8 m concentration, this is 14 molar concentration. So, high concentration sodium silicate solution, sodium hydroxide solution. Then use a super plasticizer to actually disperse the system and you might add extra water 22.5 kg etcetera etcetera per meter cube. So, this will have some water in the system itself plus this water. So, what you are using? You are using fly ash, sodium silicate, sodium hydroxide and of course, rest all is like concrete only, rest all is like concrete only. And then you make this concrete 60 degrees centigrade curing temperature, curing temperature is 60 degrees centigrade, you know 60 degrees centigrade is the curing temperature, that is the only the problem that is there, curing temperature is 60 degrees centigrade, 60 degrees centigrade curing temperature and that is you know somewhere around that and that is that is actually the problem. Besides the problem of purity of this one, you, you know this molarity and this molarity such strong uh, concentrated material, pure comp material you got to use and therefore, the cost is actually cost is high, cost is not yet it is not you know. So, more research is required, you require more research in this, but once successful it may actually do away with the cement, uh, cement lime based cement altogether. Well, there could be something new coming in magnesia based cement coming in in the meantime and several other things are actually really being worked on. Now, so far what we looked, we looked into all the types of concrete, varieties of concrete and remember we talked of so many types of concrete right in the beginning in the first lecture, we said normal concrete, high strength concrete and high strength and high performance concrete, high strength matrices, uh, roller compacted concrete, self compacting concrete and, and you know a whole lot of them we discussed actually. But one issue of concrete we got to look into called sustainability, sustainability. it should sustain. What is sustainability? To use the resources, currently available resources in such a manner that it does not affect the use by future generation. So, that is it, use all materials, energy, everything in such a manner that it does not affect. I am not going into a formal definition of sustainability now in this last lecture, but because I have other things to talk about, but this is a whole you know set of literature available on this issue, but it is relevant to our concrete very much and first thing in this issue is of course, the embodied energy. Cement production uses energy also emits carbon dioxide because you are calcining calcium carbonate. So, it emits actually carbon dioxide. It uses a some amount of energy. So, therefore, that energy which is used in cement production is called embodied energy it will include the transport of raw material, you can go further down below. There are other concepts such as XRG and so on are so many things. I do not think we are going into this, but embodied energy is the energy that is gone into the materials from production up to the construction in our case. So, the energy used in production and transportation of the material is called embodied energy. So, this is there for cement. Aggregate may require if you are crushed aggregate may require some energy for production mining and then you know today in future surely it will be mined only open cast mines as they are in many of the western countries. Quarry uh, even if you are taking out from the quarry you are crushing it there is some energy going into it then transportation. So, therefore, similarly fine aggregate transportation as well as energy required in production they make the embodied energy and then um, OPC produces carbon dioxide and it is actually next to fossil fuel in production of carbon dioxide which is a greenhouse gas as you know. What is a greenhouse gas? A greenhouse gas is one like carbon dioxide, methane etcetera, etcetera, water vapor. You know what is a greenhouse? For example, if you have a glass house which you might have seen in hill stations, the glass allows long I mean short wave radiation to pass through it. So, it allows sunlight to come through it but does not allow long wave radiation to pass through it. So, it is 
transparent to short wave radiation, opaque to long wave radiation. As a result, in a green greenhouse, temperature is maintained house, high if there is sun's radiation available. So, in cold countries, it is very important. In even in hill station in India, uh, the, the plant rooms, the where you have uh, small plants in nurseries, you have greenhouses where actually the glass or some transparent material which allows short wave radiation on solar radiation to come in, but opaque to terrestrial radiation which are long wave radiations. So, carbon dioxide layer of formed on top of the atmosphere is almost acting like that and that is causing solar radiation to come in, but getting trapped. Normally within a year, whatever so radiation comes in from the sun, it actually gets dissipated to the atmosphere in some manner or other by radiation back, evaporation transport, you know, several so many mechanisms. We are not going to this. But if the carbon dioxide is there, it does not allow radiation to go back. So, it is trapping and that is causing global warming. So, this is a concern. So, cement is the next two fossil fuel in terms of this carbon dioxide production, anthropogenic carbon dioxide 5 to 10 percent. And therefore, it is very important to look into this. And India of course, is the second largest producer of OPC and it is OPC only. It is the OPC only. So, OPC uh, after China. And uh, therefore, this issue is very important, important for us. And then if you look at this, the volume of concrete we use, because we have said concrete is a very you know economical and many other advantages are there. So, because of its volume of concrete use is uh, uh, very large, the cement is the material used by mankind next to water. Water is maximum, then you use cement or concrete. So, part uh, capita concrete consumption in the world is increasing also astronomically, need not go into that details at the moment, but because of sheer volume of cement concrete is the major contributor to embodied energy in most of the buildings, but it is also a major contributor to carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So, that is why 5 to 10 percent. So, hands, con hands contributes most to the carbon emission in the initial stages. In its initial stages, it actually contributes maximum to the carbon. So, therefore, concrete and green construction, this is very, very important. So, we should see that how concrete reduces and one of the culprit is of course, the OPC clinker production. And that is why this high volume fly ash concrete came by, geopolymer concrete is being looked into, magnesium based cement is being looked into and several other issues are being looked into. Now, you know the major contributor to embodied energy is most building and uh, as we said, it is next to the OPC cement. Typically, if you see it in buildings, in a given building, because of the quantity that is used, masonry would be, you know, embodied energy gigajoules. If I look at it, mm, typical in a building, masonry will be there, steel will be there. Although steel per mid ton, metric ton per metric ton, embodied energy produced by steel is much more. Plastics, but concrete being sheer volume, it is actually the largest producer of, you know, largest contributor to embodied energy is building. So, one issue is embodied energy, the other is of course, the operational energy, because after in buildings and of course, infrastructure embodied energy itself is good enough, concrete is not going to add to the or save the uh, operational energy in any manner. So, one must look at life cycle energy impl implications in all cases, life cycle greenhouse gas contribution that is one should look into as far as concrete sustainability is concerned and contribution to natural resources depletion other than those used as fossil fuel, because fossil fuel is already taken care of there, right. So, for example, sand, today in India sand, you cannot get river sand, environmental problem, you have created ponds, pits in the river, changing the prob, you know river by taking sand from the river, you are actually disturbing the system of the river, ecological and environmental system of the river. So, you cannot take sand from there. So, therefore, depletion of the res natural resource, this has already occurred, but we should not deplete it, deplete it more right now for the, so that future generation gets more affected by various manners, by not able to use the resource for themselves, but environmental concerns all put together. So, natural resource depletion is an issue. Similarly, coarse aggregate uh, resources are, you know, they are not increasing, they are decreasing. So, therefore, one has to keep that into mind. So, natural resource depletion is what one should see and that must be taken in. So, sustainability performance of concrete should take into all these issues. And that is why you have high volume fly ash, geopolymer concrete, magnesium 
uh, geopolymer concrete and magnesium based cements and these are being thought about. Minimization of the cement consumption is very, very important because durability, it should be more durable, maintenance free, durable, maintenance free. If you do more maintenance, lot of cement again you are going to use where OPC might contribute. If you are using polymer, they are also again polymers also, you know, they will contribute to some kind of energy use and so on. So, this issue has to be looked into and therefore, sustainability performance when one, one talks about concrete, one must look into all these issues put together. And therefore, let me summarize this lectures all together one by one and I will take a few minutes in the summarization slide. We have looked into concrete from the last one we looked is that it is sustainable, it can be sustainable. Now, how it can be sustainable? Minimize, minimize carbon emission, carbon dioxide emission that is you know reduce the use of OPC clinker as they are produced now. How can you do it? Use of supplementary cementitious material, surely use of high range water reducing agent because particularly supplementary cementitious material like fly ash, which is actually otherwise a problem of storing from environmental concern. They would create environmental disturbances. So, use this material in concrete, even in structural grade of concrete, if you have good structural grade of concrete, if you are not using high volume fly ash concrete. So, they should be used and so is a plus water reducing agent, because water reducing agent can reduce the use of water and hence for same water cement ratio you can use less cement. A, it has got its implication on economy also. Attempt to use recycled aggregate, lower you know recycled aggregate as much as possible or recycled material as, as much as possible. At the moment coarse aggregate may be may not be very easy to use, but surely pond ash bottom ash and waste from let us say marble industry and other industries if they are characterized properly and uh, researched properly they can also be used. So, the, to make concrete sustainable these are the thing first is the and also is thermal properties if you are using in building. So, one must look into because it can concrete can store energy it has got what is called thermal mass it can store energy. So, these issues are it looked into then radiation you know rejecting the radiation. This depends upon what is called emissivity of the surface, long wave emissivity. So, the color and of course, now people are using nanotechnology as for example, titanium oxide on concrete might produce or various kind of admixtures and so on a concrete which is self cleansing concrete and several other attempts are being made. So, these are trying to make concrete sustainable. So, this was the last one I looked into in the summarization, but first of all all through our 42 hours of discussion what we have observed concrete is versatile. Where does the strength range, range from 5 MPa to 200 MPa maybe 800 MPa cement based composites. So, it is really versatile very very versatile material it can show you, you can you can design it for strength as you want. Put fiber into it, you can get right kind of ductility that you desire, but if you do not get it tensile strength improvement is not as much, you can obviously use reinforced concrete or pristress concrete, but tensile strength also can be enhanced perhaps in future. If you look at moldability, roller compacted concrete zero slump to self compacting concrete, again it is versatile very high range. The tensile strength and ductility of course, remains problem for normal concrete, but then we do not use concrete as such in most of the cases. We use it as a composite as reinforced concrete or we pre-stress it either way obviously providing reinforcement. It can provide robustness, massivity a mass concrete dam you can make it concrete or of course, good old days could have been with masonry, but largely concrete provides that answer. You cannot use most of the other material. For example, you cannot use a plastic polymer to really make a robust uh, gravity dam, but concrete can provide you that. It is economical, 
is cheap and that's why it's used so much it is relatively durable it is relatively durable more durable than many materials and you can make it more durable but many understanding are yet to be developed lot of things are still on empirical stage particularly with reference to this so research are required and they are being done development of concrete has taken concrete to a new heights in last uh, one or two decades last decade last two decades of uh, 20th century and following it up so therefore it has actually given you a real versatile material is available in terms of concrete and it can be made sustainable and there are of course more kind of attempts are being to make it more and more sustainable so therefore with this we can conclude the concrete is you know, so the is a versatile material and can be used and in this in discussions in our discussion right from the first to the last lecture we have tried to look into all those aspects of concrete thank you very much for bearing